Welcome to the Simply Thick webinar, live demo, itsy food prep. My name is Liz Fiala, and I will be your moderator today. Before I introduce our speakers, I'd like to take care of some housekeeping notes. At the end of the webinar, you will have an opportunity to ask questions. Enter them in the Q&A box on your screen anytime during the presentation. We plan to go for two hours and have allotted for 15 minutes of questions at the end. There will also be a prize raffle after the Q&A, so be sure to stay until the very end to be eligible to win a free prize. As a reminder, speech-language pathologists will receive 0.2 CEUs after completing a short quiz on ceuespresso.com. Certified dietary managers will receive two CEUs and a certificate of completion after completing and passing the online quiz sent to you. You were emailed quiz instructions as well as a copy of the quiz so that you can follow along during today's presentation. Registered dietitians and diet techs will receive two CEUs and a certificate of completion for your files within one week. Please note that sometimes these emails get stuck in your spam folder. If you don't see the email with your certificate or quiz instructions, we recommend checking your spam first. Please note, only speech language pathologists and certified dietary managers are required to take the quiz. Last but not least, this webinar will be recorded for future viewing. However, only participants who are registered for and attended our live webinar will be eligible for CEUs. Now, I would like to introduce our speakers. John Hollihan is the president and founder of Simply Thick and an inaugural member of the ITSI Hall of Appreciation. He is also a member of the Canadian ITSI Reference Group and a founder of the U.S. and Territories ITSI Reference Group. He has worked with Thick Nurse, and not just in healthcare, for his entire business career. He has trained and presented ITSI to over 3,000 people. Lori Berger is a regional manager for Simply Thick in the Midwest region. She works with acute, long-term care, and chain accounts, as well as distribution and home health care customers by educating on dysphagia, presenting on ITSI, and teaching uses of Simply Thick. Lori has worked in the dysphagia area for 19 years. Lori earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Dietetics and Restaurant Hotel Management from Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana, and her Master's of Business Administration with a Marketing Emphasis from Webster University in St. Louis, Missouri. Lori is a member of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and the Missouri Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Now, without further ado, let's get started with the ITSI webinar. Thank you, Liz. I'm Laurie Berger, and I'm going to get us started tonight with our live demo ITSI food prep webinar. So let's get right into it. Our agenda. So Liz just did our housekeeping, and we're going to spend about 10 minutes on ITSI test methods. Then I'm going to turn it over to John to talk about extremely thick stock. Then we have more than an hour of food demos and 15, about 15 minutes of liquid demos. And then we'll have plenty of time for questions. Disclosure statements. So both John and I both are paid by Simply Thick. And non-financially, we are a supporter of ITSI, but we don't get any special treatment for that. We really don't have anything to say about what they do uh, with ITSI. The learner objectives. After watching the presentation, you will be able to use the ITSI test methods to test your current menu items. You're also going to be able to use number four, level four, extremely thick stock to adjust for the natural variability in raw food and food preparations. Also, you're going to be able to prepare a bread product that complies with ITSI standards, and you'll be able to articulate the difference between a descriptive diet like ITSI versus a prescriptive diet like NDD, National Dysphagia Diet. So a little about me, these are some fun bios. Um, Liz told you I graduated with a degree in nutrition and dietetics. I enjoy learning. I'm currently enrolled in my third session of Washington University Mini Medical School. I'm passionate about sports, especially at St. Louis sports teams. And now is a really good time um, in St. Louis because we have a lot going on with sports. I love off the beaten path travel and that's QE. I'm a dog person. Okay. So a little bit about me, John Hollihan. As Liz said, I am the founder of Simply Thick. A couple little known facts about me is that I actually have a degree in paper science and engineering. 
which uh, always surprises people that ended up in this industry. And kind of the uh, two lies and a, and a truth type of joke about John is that my grandfather invented Lucky Charms. I am married to my college sweetheart. We have three kids, one girl and two boys. As you can see in the picture on the top there, uh, we've hosted exchange students. So in the middle of my family is an eagle from Spain. And that was in 2019, the family photo. Uh, we've also, we don't limit our house to just having uh, exchange students. We also have exchange dogs, I guess, because we fostered 14 dogs. And I am an active Boy Scout leader. And the picture on the bottom there is me and my two sons on the top of Mount Phillips at uh, Philmont uh, Scout Ranch. And really excited to get here today. So I'll turn it back to Lori. So now let's move on to the ITSI test methods. So these are the eight ITSI test methods. And we'll be going through most of these today. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna do chopstick tests. We're not gonna do transitional foods, but we're gonna do everything else. And the nice thing about the ITSI test methods is that you can do all the testing with just three tools, a fork, a spoon, and a certain syringe that we'll talk about in just a moment. Now you have this in your ITSI kit. So I'm gonna suggest that you take this out. It's the simple testing reference guide. And this really tells you for each level on the ITSI diet, what tests you need to do. So we'll use this in some of our um, demonstrations tonight. So you'll wanna have that handy. The next thing on here is, this is an example of minced and moist ITSI audit tool. And this is from the ITSI website. You can get all the levels of ITSI um, diets on the ITSI website. So what I like about these, you should use them when you're getting ready to implement ITSI. And you can see on here, it's got the critical tests and then it also shows meets criteria at time of service, 15 minutes after serving and 30 minutes after serving. So as you know, when you work in a, a community or you work in a hospital, you plate the food and then the resident or the patient doesn't eat right away. So we need to make sure that the ITSE tests are, that you test it later so that when the patient gets the food that it still is ITSE compliant. And this is the Simply Thick ITSE cutting board. And I'm gonna to refer to this also and this is a great tool because it's got the critical tests for levels four pureed, five minced and moist, and six soft and bite-sized. And if you are interested in this, this is something that you can talk to your Simply Thick representative about, but we will be using that today. All right, so now let me stop my share and we're gonna do a little demo here with just to kind of get you all started. So what I have here is I have chicken and I've got level six, soft and bite-sized right here. Then I've got minced and moist level five, and then I've got level four puree. So what I thought we'd do is go with the simple testing reference guide and do some testing on this, just to show you how easy this is to do. So if we start with soft and bite-sized, I wanna look at the food size assessment first. So what I did is I cut this and you could actually use the you can use the guide. Let's see if I can get that in there. And you, you can use our um, cutting board to see if the size is correct. But also for both soft and bite size, the pieces should be the size of your thumbnail or the width of a fork. So that's how you tell that we have the right size. Then next, we're gonna look at the, the fork spoon separation test. So we wanna make sure that we can cut through the, the, the chicken and you can see that cut very easily. So that passed. And then we wanna do the fork pressure test. So we wanna push on the chicken till my thumbnail turns white and we don't want, we wanna be able to break the chicken apart and that does break the chicken apart. So that would pass also. Now let's look at the minced and moist. So if we look at minced and moist, first we wanna look at the size. So when we look at the size, we can use our cutting board and the size really needs to be between the tines of a fork, which is about four millimeters. So we can push on that and we can see that the food comes right through. So that would pass. Um, next, let's look at the fork drip test. So for minced and moist, the fork drip test, nothing should drip through and it doesn't, so that passes. 
Then we wanna do the spoon tilt test. The spoon tilt test indicates if something's too sticky. So the spoon tilt test, it came right off the spoon, so this is not too sticky. And let's see, I think we did all of them on the minced and moist. So then let's go on to the puree. And first we will do the fork drip test for the puree. If you look on that, we wanna do the fork drip test first and it should not come through the fork and it doesn't. Now it can form a tail, there's no tail, but it, it's not coming through. And then we wanna do the spoon tilt test for the puree also. And we wanna make sure it's not too sticky. And you can see that came right off the spoon. So that passed also. So that's what I wanna show you on that. Now I've got one more thing I wanna show you. And that is, I actually took some lemonade and I thickened it to mildly thick. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna do the ITSY flow test. So first thing is I've got my syringes here. Now let's just talk about syringes for a minute. You've got a couple of these in your, in your ITSY kit. And the ones that are correct to use for ITSY are the BD 10 milliliter syringe, reference number 303134. So you can save that so you know what syringe you should use. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to fill one of the syringes and then I'm gonna take the lemonade and I'm going to put it at an angle. Let me make sure you can see that. And I'm gonna put my finger below the syringe to make sure it doesn't flow out. And then I'm gonna fill my syringe up to the 10 milliliter mark. Okay, once I get it to the 10 milliliter mark, you can see here, then I'm gonna grab my phone and I'm gonna get my timer going and I'm gonna time it for 10 seconds and then I'm gonna see what's left in the, in the syringe. So I've got it started and you can see it's flowing out. And we'll see what we have left. Okay. All right, let's get that off. Okay, so when I look at the syringe, it looks like it's got about 5.2. So how do I know what level that is? You have this ITSY card that is in your kit. And it's very easy to hold the syringe, the, the side with the um, ruler, and you can see that this is in the pink, in the pink level. There you go. And that would mean, be, mean it was mildly thick between four and eight, and that's exactly what this is showing. So I hope this helps you and shows you how easy that the ITSY testing is to do. So now I wanna turn it over to John, and he has a couple things he's gonna show you next. All right, thank you, Lori. Uh, great start to tonight. Uh, we've been prepping really hard and we've been getting really excited about this. So even though this is billed as, as food preparation, I wanted to start with, with a demonstration on uh, two supplements. And the reason I wanted to start with supplements is because it's gonna show us something kind of interesting uh, by the end here. So what I did is while Lori was working is I got two Insurin Lives, but they're different flavors. So I have chocolate and I have vanilla. And what I've done is I've mixed them up and we're just gonna test them with the flow test real quick. And then that way, we're gonna start out and kind of compare where they are now versus where they're gonna be in an hour and a half. It's one of the things we found in all the ITSY testing is that you know supplements are a big critical part of oral nutritional, um, clinical nutrition management, things like that. And so it's a key component to have ready and to have going on. And we do a lot of testing of simply to figure this out. And you know, honestly, kind of pull our hair out sometimes because supplements can be so difficult. Um, and this is just a beautiful demonstration we're gonna to do tonight to show you kind of why things can be so different, even within the same brand or the same, um, same product. So we're gonna wait for the timer to go and then we will do it 10 seconds. This is the vanilla one. And we will write down exactly how thick it was. So the timer's going, you can see it going. And we're ending up with 5.8 on the vanilla. So I'm gonna put that in the fridge and 
we will bring it back in about an hour and a half towards the end of the thing. And I should mention that what I did here is I added one pump stroke to the full bottle, which is about eight ounces. And so that's about half of our normal dose. And we find with supplements, that's a good starting place. And I did each one the same. I mixed for a minute while we were off camera and Lori was showing you all those test methods. And so these were treated exactly the same. They're the same manufacturer, same brand line, two different flavors. And right now they both should be mildly thick. So with the chocolate, we are going to wait for the timer to go. And so as we deal with oral nutritional supplements, we find that there is a big art to it. And we have a big project going on at Simply Thick. And this is 7.4. So that's where we're gonna start out with these. We have this big project going on to try and characterize these and put together a system that will allow us to uh, provide recipes to you and your customers for a lot of different supplements. And that's, that's something we've been working on. So the next thing I wanna talk to you about is how we make all of this work. And really over time, what we found is, I, I've even written a blog post called The Magic of Extremely Thick Stock. So we use uh, cooking stock, whether it's vegetable or chicken or meat or whatever you happen to have, you can sometimes match it to your meats. That helps out too. But the idea with this is we have something that is gonna be able to provide lubricity, it's gonna add thickness, and it's kind of funny because if you have something that's too dry or you have something that's too wet, we kind of go to the same thing. So I have eight ounces here. And what I do is I just add eight pump strokes of Simply Thick. And what this is going to do is it's just going to make a something that can bind together loose liquid in a, in a food or if you have something that's dry and crumbly. It's going to do that as well. And we keep them in these bottles. And you'll see Lori and I using them throughout the presentation as we're going along. We're going to show you things and say, all right, we had a little simply thick stock, extremely thick stock. So, and you can even use water if you want. We just like to use stock because it is something that uh, is convenient and it you know, has a little nutritional value versus just diluting something with water. So just to show you the first time, I'm switching cameras here and I have some ground beef that we made. And you can see, you know, it passes kind of minced and moist. It's good size. I ran it in the food processor. And when I take it with the spoon, you know, it's really kind of crumbly. It's not really holding together the way that you'd really expect a minced and moist. So when I add in some simply thick stock, extremely thick stock, what that does is you begin to see it really begins to pull it together. And this is kind of an art. There's no fixed recipes because each batch of meat, you know, with the fat you get in it, it will process a little bit differently. But this is one of the big tricks we've learned in dealing with the ITZY diets is the way we bring things to the levels is now you have something that, you know, it holds together really beautifully and it really is nice and moist and minced. And so that's the value of having extremely thick stock. And whether it's water or chicken stock or beef stock or fish stock or vegetable stock, all that works because really you're not gonna change the flavor too much on anything you're working on. So we wanted to introduce that concept in the beginning here. So as you see us doing it throughout the webinar, you'll understand that's why we're doing it. And you know, we like to call it the magic. You know, it's the magic that makes everything happen. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Lori and she's gonna to talk to you about mashed potatoes. Yes, I am. Thanks, John. Okay, so you see my mashed potatoes here. And so when we learn about mashed potatoes, some mashed potatoes can be real sticky over time. So I thought that we'd make some mashed potatoes and we can look at it throughout the evening and we can see what's happening with them. Now, I was, we were very fortunate in that um, I've got some mashed potatoes that I received from Basic American Foods. And this is their pearl, potato pearls. And this is what I made. It's um, mashed potatoes with butter. I'm sure many of you use those. And what's really interesting to me is they, they've published something, which I'm sure is on their website, called Itsy Solutions. And it's got all of their different types of potatoes and what level they're compliant with. So these potatoes 
are compliant with level four, five, six, and seven, easy to chew. So what I thought we'd do is let's do some testing. So if you recall, for puree, we wanna do the fork drip test. And you can see there that it didn't drip, th it didn't drip through at all. And then we wanna make sure they're not too sticky. So we need to do the spoon tilt test. So that seemed to come off pretty good. So I'd say that for now these passed. And so we'll look at this a little bit later. And I'll put these aside for now. Next, we are going to be doing some bread. So what I thought we would do first is I'm gonna change my camera and we're gonna actually make the bread. How does that sound? And, but before we make the bread, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about bread. And actually, I think I'll put myself on the screen so you can see me and we'll talk about bread for a moment. So bread, if you are familiar with Itzy, you know why we're talking about bread because for Anybody who is on a regular diet on ITZY can have bread, but all the other levels, no bread is allowed. And so you may ask why? Bread is a choking hazard. And if you read the FAQs on the ITZY website, it's amazing. They talk about and compare bread to peanuts in their risk of choking. And we all know that we wouldn't serve one of our dysphagia patients peanuts. So you're, you're not gonna serve them bread. You're gonna have people that are, they're gonna have family members that are gonna say, I want my mother to have bread. And you're gonna need to, to talk to them about that. So I have a little, I have a piece of bread here and I'm just gonna show you a little something that you can do with the family members who, to make them understand why bread is not allowed on any of the levels, but regular. So if you do this, just take a little piece out of the middle of the bread. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in your mouth and you're not, you're just gonna use your saliva. You're not gonna chew it. So I'll do it for a second. And I'm just gonna put it in there. And what happens immediately, I'm gonna take it out so I can talk better, is that it turns into a ball and it sticks to the roof of your mouth. So you can see that that would be a choking hazard. And that's a good thing that you can do with family members to show them why bread's not allowed. Now, if your speech language pathologist wants to make an exception for certain people, they can do that. But otherwise, it's he's not recommending bread at all, except for level seven. So that brings me to talk to you about our bread recipe. So during COVID lockdown, we had many of our sales reps, who I think are watching right now too, um, develop a pureed bread recipe, which is excellent. So what I thought we would do is we are going to make the bread now. So I think you can see my food processor. I've got the recipe here. And if you're interested in the recipe, so I'm gonna be going through a few things. Um, we've got the recipe for a single batch recipe, which makes four pieces. And then we have one that makes three times and six times the batch recipe. And then we also have, and you'll see here in a minute, we have food, mold, food forms and they are all available on our website now. We are selling the food forms and then the recipes also on the simplythick.com. You can get it there. So we're just gonna follow the recipe and we're gonna make this right now. So what I've done is I have four pieces of bread in my Cuisinart. And so I, I don't wanna do that for too long because I don't want it, I want it to be fine particles, but I don't want it to turn to flour. So I'm just gonna put my bread in there and then I'm gonna look at my recipe and I'm gonna see what other ingredients I need to add. So I need to add three ounces of vegetable stock, which I have right here. And then I'm gonna put in three pumps of Simply Thick. If I get that going, there we go. The next thing I wanna put in is I wanna put in two tablespoons of melted butter and one egg. So it's that easy. And then I'm gonna turn my food processor on again. And I might do this for another 10 to 20 seconds. And if you want a, you wanna make sure there's no lumps in the bread. If you want a heavy batter, you can do it for longer in the food processor. 
So now I wanna look at it and make sure it looks smooth and it looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna change my camera around, I believe. And we're gonna try this. And what I'm gonna do is I've got a bread mold here. Rather than fill all four bread molds, because I just made enough for four pieces of bread. And rather than fill all four bread molds, I'm just gonna do one for you today. And so I've got my pan spray and I'm gonna spray the, um, the, the form. And then I'm gonna take my, let's see, my number 16 scoop and I'm gonna scoop it in to the bread mold. And with that, I can just use my, I can spread it out. And let's see if I can, I know how I can spread it out a little bit easier. I'm gonna use a spoon and I'm gonna spread it out and then it would be ready to put into the oven. And you cook it for about 11 minutes at 350 and then it would be done. But because I don't wanna spend time doing that right now, I've got cooked bread that I, I actually bake this just before the webinar. And so you can see I've got four bread molds. So there you go, there's a piece of bread right there. And so what we can do is we can actually test it. So this is pureed bread. So let's take our fork, do that, that worked. And then let's, let's do the fork pressure test. So it's, it's soft. And then I'm gonna do the spoon tilt test. Let's see if that works. Came right off, so it's not too sticky. So what we do recommend with the bread is that you can hold it, you can make it ahead of time for about 24 hours. So you won't wanna hold it much longer than that. But I think this is gonna be a, a huge solution because this recipe uses real bread. The other recipes out there um, do not use real bread. And this is very tasty and um, I think you'll like it. So now I'm gonna turn it over to John and, oh, I forgot, I forgot. I'm gonna go back and test my mashed potatoes. So let's do that first. Let me grab the mashed, pota mashed potatoes and let's see if anything changed with the mashed potatoes. Okay, so we're gonna do the spoon tilt test. That worked pretty good. And then we're going to do, we're gonna make sure it doesn't drip through the fork and it didn't drip through the fork. So now we're ready to go on to John to talk about beef and prepare some beef for you. Well, Lori told you this stuff tastes really good, you know, and it is dinner time. So I just thought I'd have a little, my minced and moist beef and uh, bread. It's good stuff, really. Everybody's gonna love it. All right, so when we're talking about beef, I just have some cooked beef here and I'm gonna prepare this to level six, and then I'm gonna press six to level five, and then we'll take it down to puree. So you can see how easy and simple this really is. And like Lori, I have one of our cutting boards here. So we're going to level six, we start out, and you know, just so you can see, the level six size really is the size of my thumbnails. And so that's a good one, or you can just put meat right here on the cutting board and you can just cut it. Or, you know, as your chefs and staff get better at this stuff, they can cut it down themselves. And it really doesn't take very much effort. Um, sometimes with beef, just depending on how it's prepared, sometimes it will pass the uh, fork pressure test, sometimes it won't. It depends on how soft it is. So when I do that, in this case, you know, it smushes down. It's not broken. Um, so this is probably just fine for level six. So that's how you would do that. You, you'd work your way through all the, all the beef and just keep cutting. And it's just going to take a few minutes really to cut it down. And this is probably a five or six ounce serving. So it would serve a lot of different, or it would be a couple different servings if you're doing it on the line. So... Now we're going to process this down to level five. So I take my food processor. I'm going to take the beef. We're just going to slide it in here. And what you will see, locked in. So it's not going to take very much to get down to level five. Turn this camera too, so maybe we can have an angle like that. 
see how that looks for us. So you'll see it. It's take much to process it. And you can see right away it's getting down to that level five. But one thing to note is I run this for a while, and I'm just running it for a while so you can see, is it is not going to go to a puree there without something else done to it. And that's where, as we, as I'll show you in a minute, it's, that's where the uh, extremely thick stock becomes really important. So when we look at this from above, this is just like the ground beef I had before. It's nice and small, but it's dry. So, we'll just take some of this out, I'll put it in here so you guys can see that when we're dealing with our minced and moist, when it's not moist enough, you'll see that again, it's dry and flaky. And yes, it passes the test, but it's really not, it's not really moist. You see it's dry and flaky. So we put in that little bit of extremely thick stock. And when you mix it, Real quick, now you begin to get that moistness that's holding it together more in the spirit of what you're looking for from a spoon tilt test, where it comes out pretty easily. That one I might add a little bit more just because it seems a little sticky. It's really quick and easy. We took that those big strips of sticky to me, we turned them into bite soft and bite-sized, and now we have some good minced and moist. And now we'll process it the rest of the way down to puree. And what I want to do, so I'm actually going to show you this angle because this really shows you what we're looking for from the process. And as it gets going, I'm going to add the extremely thick stock through the top. And then watch how all of a sudden when I add that, the meat suddenly will become a paste. It'll begin to roll. If you see how those sides roll, that's how you know you're really getting the puree down. It's just kind of rolling around the bowl and it's really chopping it up. That's kind of the fun part that we're looking for. And we can switch here to the above angle. And now you can see that it is that really fine paste that you're looking for. Um, you know, there's nothing that's going to be in there, all the big pieces are gone. And really what we're checking here is just to see if I added enough so that it falls off the spoon. And in this case, yeah, could use a little more, and that's fine. This is an art. There's not really a science to it because every piece of meat can have a different moisture. And you just add a little more simply thick stock. Extremely thick stock, turn it on. Probably should have scraped it down a little better to mix all that together. But you know, now you can see what you have is something that falls off the spoon. So it's that easy to take something all the way from solid meat all the way into the puree. So depending on what you're doing, it, you know, you can start out with a bunch of meat cut up soft and bite sized and you can process what you need from instant moist and then take the rest on the puree. And if you have it, you can chill this, you can serve it the next day, you can freeze it, you can re-therm it. It's all gonna stay together. And part of that is the magic of using the extremely thick stock. It doesn't weep afterwards. That's the advantage of having that thickener bound in there. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Lori and she is going to show you chicken, and she's also going to show you something cool that you can do with presentation. Okay. Hi, everyone again. Okay. So what we're going to do is very similar to what John just did, but we're going to do it with chicken. So I'm going to show you how easy this is to take, you have your chicken here. It's, it is, this is pre-cooked, and you're gonna take it from level six, level five, level four. So you can do this all at once. It makes it really easy so and not overwhelming. So first I wanna look at level six, soft and bite-sized. And I can actually use the cutting board and I can see that I can make the pieces the size 
that it is on the cutting board, or remember it's the size of my thumbnail, or it's the width of a fork. And that's a few ways that you can do it. So um, then what I wanna do for this test is I wanna do the fork pressure test. If you may remember, we push on it and make sure it doesn't go back to its original shape. And it looks like that smooshed pretty good. And then we also want to do the, um, we wanna cut the sample with a fork or a spoon and to make sure it's, it can do that. It's not too tough. And you can see that was really easy to do. So that passed. Now let's make some minced and moist chicken and I'm gonna change my camera and we'll get it to this. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put my chicken in here. And just like what John did, we're, so we're gonna make minced chicken and then we're gonna add our moisture. So when we put this in here, um, we, just, we don't wanna do it for very long to get to the minced level. We wanna do it for about five seconds or so because if you take it too far down, but you can, I can see here that I still have big pieces of chicken. So I may try to see if I can get those moved over a little bit so that those get broken up. So you wanna make sure that you've got the right size. And if you can remember that it was the size between the tines of a fork for minced. Okay, so now we have it minced. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that and put it in a bowl. And and then we're going to add the moisture. And so as John talked about the um, the extremely thick stock, now we want to add the moisture. So here's my extremely thick stock, and I want to add some of that to add the moisture. And so. It's like John said, it's an art. So you just have to figure out how much you need to add to it to make, give it the moisture. It may need a little bit more. And then once we do that, we're going to test it and see if it meets our requirements. So you wanna make sure that it, there's no lumps in it. That would be the first thing. And then you wanna make sure it's the right size according to um, the cutting board or between the tines of a fork. So we can push on that and we can see that it works. Then we also wanna do the spoon tilt test to make sure it's not too sticky. That worked very good. And then we wanna do the fork pressure test. And we already did that, so that worked out pretty good. And then we wanna do the fork drip test and nothing is coming off underneath the fork. So that all passed. Okay, so now let's go back to our chicken that's in the food processor and we're gonna make puree. So I need to change the camera. So now what I'm gonna do, it's probably gonna take about another 20 seconds or so. And I'm gonna put that on and then I'm gonna add the extremely thick stock while I am pureeing it. And it's gonna to start to roll. And it's rolling, so let's see what we got there. So we'll look at that and Let's test it and see what we think. So I can do it right here. I can do the spoon tilt test. That looked pretty good. I can do the fork drip test. Nothing's coming through. And then you can do the fork pressure test for puree, but it's, it's not required. So what I wanna show you is we have these handy little molds and we have this handy, handy little form and it's shaped like a chicken and it's got a handle. So I think one day we will have these available. And um, this is just a, a, a prototype right now, but I'm gonna spray it with pan spray and then I'm going to put my chicken in there. 
And actually I have, I have a number eight scoop. So let's see if I can't get enough out of here to be able to put that in the mold. I'm going to put it right in there. Try to flatten it out. And let's put it on the plate. And there you have a piece of pureed chicken. And it looks very nice. Thank you. And why would we do this? So some of you know, in presentation is very important. We eat with our eyes. And so it's very interesting that there's some studies out there that say that if you present it like it looks like real food, for example, that you find that your patients may, may actually eat 500 more calories a day. So it's very important. Presentation is very important. So that's why we're putting it in our form. Okay. So next we're going to go back to John and he is going to talk about vegetables. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Just for quick clarification sake, uh, that handled food form, this here, this is a prototype. Um, one of the reasons we're not offering it right now, as you can see, we designed it badly and there's some retraction going on there. We are in the process of having it re-engineered and redesigned. I'm thinking either by the end of the year or first quarter of next year, we'll have a handled food form like that. And, you know, it sits on the counter. It doesn't have to be washed in between times, but it's really quick on the serving line to make something that looks that much better. And if it's that easy to get an extra 500 calories, it's totally worth it. So what I have here is some cooked broccoli. And what we're going to do here is, again, we're going to run through the, the progression. Uh, you know, again, if you want stuff that's soft and bite-sized, you cut it to that size. You know, it, it cooks very, you know, it cuts down very easily. And... Uh, Soft and bite size other than the size, of course, we're just checking the softness and you can see I microwave this enough. So it's being deformed. Um, some of the ITZY videos will show you chapstick or finger test methods where you can just squeeze it and know. Uh, we're going to take this down to minced and moist. We again are going to switch to a food processor here. And we just add in the broccoli here. The broccoli is moist, so it's going to give off moisture here. And that's one of the things we got to check here is make sure that there's not a lot of moisture. I can see that we're down to about the right size coming through there. I do see a little bit of moisture down there. And this is where we get into kind of the fun with the extremely thick stock. Here again, you know, broccoli's, this broccoli's probably gonna be okay as is. It's a little dry and crumbly. If you wanted to make it stick together a little more, you'd add this in. But what it also does when you do this is that it is binding the stuff together and it's capturing the moisture. So if you have moisture that's gonna be released by this broccoli, what you end up happening, what you end up seeing here is that it is no longer going to give up that moisture. Switch the camera angle again. And that adding that thickener in there really gives you something where it's gonna to hold together a little better. It has the moisture, it's not gonna weep, it's not gonna leak. Um, and so it's just adding a little bit of that thickener, which is kind of funny, right? We use the thickener both to add moisture and to prevent moisture from seeping out so that when you lift it up, you see no moisture dripping. It goes through the tines of the fork and on the spoon tilt test, it doesn't do that. Um, and when we go down to puree, it's going to be the same type of thing. Again, I'm just going to turn this camera so you can see what it looks like when it's pulsing in that bowl. A little bit of broccoli here. I want to get it down off the sides. 
And this is just how it goes. When you're making this stuff, you're gonna get stuff flying up on the sides of your bowl. You know, need to scrape it down a couple times. And you can see how it's starting to roll a little bit. I might add a little more extremely thick stock to help it out. And that's how I know it's getting down to that really good puree level. And because it throws some stuff up on the sides, I do this a few times. And that is just the process. A little bit of repetitiveness. Not a lot to be scared of here. This is just how it goes. You can see how it's kind of rolling. You're sucking in some of the moisture. You can see it processing nicely. I add a little more stock. And now we have a beautiful puree. And I'm going to move it over here. Keep onto my plate so we can compare it to the minced and moist. Over here, you can see that there are no, there's no chunks in here. There's no moisture dripping out of it. It should come off the spoon nicely and it does. So that's how you make the puree. And well, that's how it goes with broccoli. Next, I'm gonna grab some carrots and we're gonna do the same thing with carrots. I got the carrots that I cooked. Bring out my cutting board again. And here we have, you know, some carrot discs. Now, one of the things, a couple of things I want to point out here is I'm working on our carrots and cutting these down. You may be thinking, wow, they're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And that's one of the points that I wanted to bring out it tonight is that really when it comes to this itsy stuff, it seems very intimidating when you start out, but when you really roll up your sleeves and you figure out how you're gonna do it, it is a lot of the same stuff. And when you start looking in your institutions, when you start looking around and seeing what you're already doing in your facilities, you will find that a lot of the food you guys are already preparing is gonna be fine with Itsy. So again, a little bit of pressure, the carrot crushes, no problem. Everything Lori and I are doing today, also by the way, is um, geared to four servings. And carrots is a good time to just kind of say, you know, if you are only making one serving, all of what we're doing is about multiple servings. If you're in a facility and you have, you know, three or four people, on a meal or you're somebody at home and you're making stuff for the week, you're doing your meal prep, you might wanna just do this by hand because it doesn't take that long. Whereas, if, and I'm not even that, I'm not trained as a chef at all, as you can tell by my terrible technique here, but even us bad home cook people, it's not gonna take very much to make your own minced and moist. And if you're just doing one serving, it's not gonna take very long and you may decide that's less of a big deal than making one of your food, pro making your food processor dirty and having to clean that. And so now I'm gonna click over to the food processor just to show you that that's really quick if it turns out that you're getting tired of chopping by hand, which I get very quickly. And the carrots have a lot of moisture. And making minced and moist, of course, not too much. But in this case, I want to knock them down on the sides a little bit. So what you're going to find, like I said, in your institutions as you start doing this, doesn't take that much. A lot of the food you're already making, you will find passes in seed testing. One of the processes that you get to for um, when 
you start going through this stuff is you will find that a lot of your food already meets it. So these carrots are pretty good. Uh, it allows three, allows food to be three dimensional. So you know what you always hear for this is four millimeters. It's actually four millimeter, or it's, four, it's eight. It's four by four by 15. Took me a moment. And here we might add a little bit of extremely thick stock to just bring it together. Process this down, get the minced and moist look. And everything will test just fine here. So again, we have stuff that's fitting through the fork tines. There's no moisture dripping out. Let me put it on the spoon and it falls down. And so we add just a little bit of that extremely thick stock again, because there was that moisture in there. We're adding the stock this time to kind of bind the whole thing together. And one of the things that I do want to get across to people is that you may be thinking to yourself, wow, they're just doing the same thing over and over again. And in a lot of ways, that's what we found with the ITC process once we discovered the benefits of using extremely thick stock is that it really becomes just a repetitive process of doing this over and over again. And so when people keep asking us about how to prepare things, you kind of scratch your heads a little bit because it seems so obvious to us that it's over and over the same type of thing. But that's why we wanted to do this demonstration tonight to show you guys, that yes, this really is all there is to it. We just keep doing the process, which is put it in the food processor, uh, process it, add some extremely thick stock to bind up the liquid, test the stuff. And, you know, it seems daunting, this ITSY test. But really, I mean, I just did three tests while I'm sitting here uh, saying a sentence that's under 10 seconds. It's really quick, it's really easy, and it's very exciting because we finally have some tests we can all agree on that, hey, this is what a puree is. This is what a minced and moist is. We're using the same language, we're using the same tests. And so it, it becomes a very fun and very simple process for all of us to do. Looks like we are going to flip back to Lori now and she is going to test her mashed potatoes again. Okay, so here's our mashed potatoes. You think they're going to pass again? So let's do the fork drip test. Nothing's dripping, so that looks good. And then our spoon tilt test. That looked like it, maybe a little, but it's still, I think it's still okay. So um, as the person from, um, from basic, Ameri basic, basic American Foods said that it does, um, it does stay, so it, it stayed. So that passed. We won't be coming back to it again, but I just wanted to show you now. Some potatoes may not pass, so you may have to add butter to it after 30 minutes, and you'll just have to do the test and see if it passes. Okay, so now grab my applesauce, and I think you'll find this pretty interesting. So, okay, let's see if we can see this. So applesauce is something that we often serve to our people on dysphagia diets or pureed diets. And it's, you're gonna see something really interesting. I plated this just a short, just a little while ago. And this is plain applesauce with nothing. I didn't, this is just plain applesauce right out of the carton. Look at that. We're getting a lot of separation of the food and the liquid. And that is not allowable on ITSY, we don't wanna to give two different consistencies or we don't want the liquid to be separate. So applesauce right out of the container is not gonna pass for ITSY. But if we look at what I did is I added some, I, I thickened extremely thick water and I put four ounces of water and four pumps of Simply Thick and I put just a small amount in the applesauce and look how nicely that's holding together. So you're not getting the separation of liquid. So this is something to think about and um, something to do with your applesauce. So that's all I have on that. And I think, is it your turn now? Yes. 
turn it over to John to talk about bananas. Okay, so I'm going to talk about bananas. Let me grab my pile of bananas back here. Bananas are probably, from my perspective, one of the best reasons or one of the easiest ways to help explain what ITSI means when they say that ITSI is a descriptive diet, not a prescriptive diet. Because we have bananas, and we all are familiar with this, right? Here's my stack of bananas I've been saving for today, you know? The question always is, are bananas on the menu or not? And so it's really going to depend on, how, I'm going to guess this one is for sure. Uh, and, and what do you do with these? And so that's why it gives us the test methods, because you never know what you're going to get. You never know what the delivery is going to be. And so the beauty is it gives us the tools and the language and the test methods to be sure that we know that the bananas we have today, if they meet spec or not. So when we grab this one, just randomly, first thing we're gonna do is just test it. Is it soft? Cuts very easily, and again, it mashes. So hey, banana. this banana is gonna be great today. Uh, this banana, I can tell you already, I haven't even opened it, and it's gonna be great, right? This is the really, mushy gushy one. So this one, we might actually be worried that it's too sticky. So just checking, running through four bananas here. We'll be able to see which ones are on the menu today and which ones are not. This one cuts easily as well. It smushes very easily. And so real quickly, I can see that, because uh, we brought these here the other day, getting ready for today, they all pass. So we can cut these up to soft and bite size real easily. Now, one of the things we've run into talking to various people is that some people say, you know, bananas are really tough to make minced and moist. Bananas are really tough to make purees, things like that, because it's so sticky. And they're right. It is very sticky when you process it, really kind of sticks kind of questionable. So you know what I'm going to say, right? Let's put a little uh, little extremely thick stock in there. And this is where you'll see it becomes lubricious. It stops that stickiness, it stops the parts from sticking together as much. And it becomes a lot more that uh, banana-y stuff that sticks together. Now it falls off the spoon much easier. So when you're dealing with bananas, that's one way. And again, if we ran it through the processor or if we just mash it, and bananas are easy enough that you can just mash it yourself and then you'll make yourself a puree, right? So to me, the banana one is not even really worth putting into a food processor, especially if I'm only doing one serving and it does, it sticks together, it goes through very easily. It's very nice. But, you know, we all know, depending, like I said, what's delivered today, you don't know if bananas are on the menu or not. And so that's the easiest way and the simplest explanation that most Americans totally understand when I say, it's used a descriptive diet, not a prescriptive. So it describes how the food's supposed to behave. We test it. it they give us the test methods. And then we can determine for ourselves, are bananas on the menu today? And it's not being facetious at all. It's just checking to see what you have. And again, when we use the extremely thick stock, we can help prevent that stuff from sticking together when you get the minced and moist, and it's very easy to use. So after that, we are going to switch back to Lori, and she's going to talk to us about some fruit. Okay, so next we're going to do peaches. So you see here that I am using a small Cuisinart. Uh, the reason I decided to use a small Cuisinart for this one is because I'm only doing two servings. Um, I don't, it, you may have a small Cuisinart in your facility and you may not, but this is, I have two, uh, I have two half cups of peaches in here. And what I've done is, I probably should take them out of here before we start, because our level six, it's already level six. So you can see here, you can see the peach pieces. It's already level six. We can push on it and it does mash. And then we can do the fork drip test. And that works too. So 
actually we didn't need to do the fork drip test for that sorry we want to cut into it and make sure that it cuts apart that it's soft enough and it does okay and then the size is perfect you know, the size of our thumbnail or we can use the it's the um our um our other sheets to be able to tell that so you can see that that passed. So what I did is I put the peaches in here and I drained them first. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the food processor on for just a few minutes, for just a few seconds. And see if I can get it to the correct side size to make minced and moist. So I'm gonna need to be careful that I have it the right size. So that doesn't look like it was quite enough. But I don't want to take it all the way down to puree. So we'll have to really watch the pieces in this and make sure that they're looking good. So I have a little bit bigger piece in here. So I have to watch that. And for this, I need to do the fork pressure test. It seems to work. I need to do the spoon tilt test. But I got to watch my pieces, my sizes. So that worked. But we may need to put it in here just a second longer to do the minced and moist. So you notice with this one, I minced it, but it's already moist enough because there's a lot of moisture from the peaches already, even though I've drained them. So we can probably do it another second. Let's see what happens. And we'll see, it's, it's, it's probably pretty good now. Yeah, there's still pieces in there that are allowed on the minced and moist. Okay, so if I wanna do puree, now we need to tighten it up. So rather than using simply thick stock, the extremely thick stock, I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna introduce more liquid into the peaches, which are already have a lot of liquid and that could be true with a lot of fruits. So for this, I'm gonna add straight out of the simply thick bottle, I'm gonna add four pumps and we'll see how that works. And we'll blend that. You're still going to need to watch the sizes here, the peach sizes, because you need to make sure that you blended it all down. So that's looking pretty good. So for puree, peaches, and these smell so good, I just want to eat them, um, and I will. So I want to do the spoon tilt test, and it comes right off the spoon. And then I'm going to do the fork drip test and it's not dripping. So, and you actually can have a tail. So let's see if there's a tail. I just have a lot here. A little tail's okay, just so it's not dripping down. You can see that. So just be careful of the size of, of that you get the sizes, uh, that there's no lumps in the purees at all. And this looks pretty good and it's really yummy. So that gives you an example of peaches. Okay, so now I'm gonna have Liz roll. I did an ice cream video prior to the webinar. And so I'm gonna have her show that to you and then we'll, we'll talk about the ice cream once that rolls. And next I'm gonna show you how to make thickened ice cream. So first thing is we have a recipe that you can get from your Simply Thick sales rep or you can get it online at simplythick.com and it's thickened ice cream. So what you need is you need four cups of ice cream and you're gonna need Simply Thick to thicken it. And we're gonna use um, the bulk packet mildly thick today. And so what you do to make ice cream is you soften the ice cream for 15 minutes. So that's what I have here. I've got chocolate ice cream. I've got four cups of chocolate ice cream that I've softened for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to add this to the food processing bowl. And then I am going to add my Simply Thick. It's very easy to do. And I'm going to add my Simply Thick directly into the bowl. And you can see that. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to blend it in the food processor. 
until it's until it's blended in. Simply Thick actually blends in very easily. So and now we can check it and see that if it's blended very well. And it looks like it's very smooth and blended. And what we're gonna need to do is refreeze it and then it'll be ready to serve. So this is what I made and I thought we could test it. So this is very yummy. This is chocolate ice cream. And so what I need to do, I need to do the fork drip test first. So what I did is I took this out. We took it out of the freezer probably about 15, 20 minutes ago. And so the fork drip test, you can see it's not dripping it's not dripping at all. And then if we do the spoon tilt test, let's see what happens. Well, it might be a little too sticky. So we might need to let it thaw a little bit more. So we actually can look at this later and see if it's changed at all. So I think that's what we'll do. Okay. Now, I think we're gonna take some questions since they're very relevant to what we're doing. And so why don't we do that? So let's dive into these questions and we'll start with the ice cream. Jackie asks, what outcomes are you looking for in the spoon tilt test? Just a cohesive fall or a clean spoon afterwards? It's a good question. So with the spoon tilt test, we wanna make sure it's not too sticky. And so when you do the spoon tilt test, you, you really just need to do it with a flick of your hand to get it off the spoon. And so if it sticks to the spoon, then it's too sticky and then it wouldn't pass. So what we tell people to do is hold your elbow and then you won't use your whole arm and then you flick it off and it should come off easily and the spoon should be relatively clean and then it would pass. So you are looking for that cohesiveness. Do you want to get over here? You are looking for that cohesiveness plus it's, it's that flick, but you are allowed to have a nice film on there because um, they don't expect it to be clean. So it's really a matter of, sometimes it becomes kind of a judgment call. Once you try to remove as much judgment as possible, yeah. but sometimes, you know, you gotta have a discussion with your staff and decide how much is okay. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> uh, so I was just saying that it, it's something where you don't expect the spoon to be clean. Um, and it, because the spoon is not clean or the spoon is clean, that becomes kind of a, a debate between you and your staff. How much is enough? Itsy tries to remove as much of the subjectivity as possible, but sometimes there's just, there's things left behind. And in that debate about how much is okay is, it's an ongoing issue. And so it's not gonna be clean, especially when you have some, you know, some dark things, but you don't wanna have a whole bunch stuck on there. Thank you, John. And our next question, I'm going to go ahead and direct this toward Lori. Lori, is frozen ice cream supposed to be thawed at room temperature? That's how we do it, as we thaw it at room temperature. So um, when I was making it, I thawed it at room temperature for 15 minutes. So I think, I think that probably answers your question. If it doesn't, just put another question back in there for me. And Lori, we're going to stick with you for just a moment. Now back to the peaches. Were those fresh or canned peaches? Those were canned peaches. And um, I can show you what, what they are. They're dull canned peaches. Ah, there you go. You got the picture. So I use canned peaches and then I drained them before I did it. Um, there's still a lot of liquid in peaches. So even if you use fresh, um, I would imagine you would treat it similarly. Thank you, Lori. And I'm going to turn the next question to John. John, when doing beef and thickened stock, what amount do you use? Uh, well, that is really, it is kind of an art. There, there's no set amount because every time you make beef, 
you're going to have some different fat content. You have different amounts of grizzle. You're going to have, if you cook the beef a little, a little more before you're processing it, it's going to be drier. It's going to need a little more. If you cook it and it's juicy, you're going to need a little less. So it really is, there is an art to it, but you really can't mess it up too badly. And the eight ounces I, I made at the beginning, now there's, I don't know, an ounce or two left. So, you know, making all this stuff, I've used about six ounces so far. And that's just how it goes. But it really is kind of a, you get a feel for it really, really quick. It doesn't take very much for any given batch. And John, we're going to stick with you for just a moment. I have one more question for each of you before we move on to the next session of our webinar. So John, this question says, does the pureed bread not stick to the roof of your mouth? And I know Lori presented this on this particular webinar, but you've done this many times. It does not stick at all. It, it, it really just, it falls apart in your mouth. It, it's very easy. It, it, it doesn't really have a lot of structure and it doesn't stick. It, it's kind of like a really soft egg bake with that egg in there holding it together. It just falls apart really easily. Thank you. Yes, Lori, our last question is for you. What are the measurements or do you just know from the spoon flick? And this was done about half an hour ago. So I'm thinking this may have been done for the mashed potatoes. Okay, so say it again, the, the spoon flick on the mashed potatoes. What are your measurements ah, for the spoon flick? Okay, so there's, there's no measurements. So what you're going to do, it, it does, it's the methods decrease subjectivity, but we know when we do the flick, it can leave a small film on the, on the spoon, but it shouldn't be stuck to the spoon. Okay. And as I said before, you want to hold your elbow and you can flick it off. Okay. So you can do a pretty decent flick with your, with your hand to, um, or your arm to get it off. It just should not stick. Remember, this is, we're looking at stickiness and we don't want it to be too sticky. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Yes, it does. And we are ready to roll into the next portion of our webinar. So I'm going to turn it over to John Hollihan, where he'll be testing some peanut butter, yogurt, and other fun items. I'm sure we all know, and you can probably guess right away that when you talk about peanut butter, it's just not going to pass the Etsy. And it is actually one of the things where they show some of their pictures, you know, it just, it's going to stick to the spoon. And so if you're a big peanut butter lover like me, that's a very sad day. Um, but what we have found is the stuff called PB2. And one of our sales reps turned me on to this. And basically it's a very, it's, it's already dry. Uh, it's peanut butter that's been dried out. And what they want, what they do is it's a powder. So you just take two tablespoons of the powder and you mix it with water. One and a half tablespoons of water, so two, two tablespoons of the peanut butter. And this is just kind of rehydrating peanut butter paste. And usually when you make it, it comes out a little bit thin. This one, You know how live demonstrations go, right? Apparently I used not enough water with this one. So you can add just a little bit more water. And then it will make a, a liquid. You can actually run through the uh, Etsy syringe test. And it's very surprising that you can get a moderately thick peanut butter liquid. And what that will allow you to do is have people have something that certainly tastes like peanut butter, it's a little sweeter than most peanut butters, but it allows them to get that flavor that they're looking for. And so this one's still a little too thick. And this comes from a little bit to do with the uh, density of the powder. That's how we go on live TV, right? So this powder in there, it, sometimes it's more dense, sometimes it's less dense. So there is a little bit of an art, again, standard directions normally when I do it, I end up with a moderately thick to a mildly thick 
motion. It's a little better. I think what I had was some hard packed stuff because this powder in there can be dense sometimes. So just for kicks, I brought my syringes so we can look at it and you can see that it actually makes this peanut butter that will flow very nicely in the ITSY syringe test. Fill it up to 10 milliliters. Put on our timer. You can see it starts dripping. And here we have something that comes out at 8.4, 8.6. So that is a moderately thick liquid and it's very peanut butter flavored and you can see it's not sticky and it runs through the tines of the fork. So that would be great. So that's one way you can deal with that. I know it's probably not gonna stick to things the way that they're used to, but that is a solution that we can provide people and still fit within the ITSI framework. Because again, this is a, it's a descriptive framework. It's not a prescriptive. So in like another framework, you could say, oh, we get something like yogurt. Um, this looks great, but look, it's got fruit stuck in there. So we're just gonna ignore the fruit for now, just to show you how you would test it if you didn't have fruit or if you're gonna run it through your fruit processor. But again, to that point, you can see on the spoon tilt test, most of it came off, no problem. So it's certainly not too sticky. The problem we have is the chunks of fruit. So this would be a mixed texture. And again, that wouldn't be okay under its seat. And so there's gonna be a lot of things that off the shelf are gonna work just fine for you. But when you, uh, when you start doing testing of all the things you serve in your facility, you're gonna find stuff like you're gonna find some, some yogurt and stuff like that that is not gonna work. Um, I have this pudding. Again, this is something where you mix it together and you just run a quick test. So as you begin to prepare for ITSI, what we often recommend to people is, you know, once a week, get your group together that's looking at this and go test your, uh, the food that's at your facility. And so see that came off. I had to hold my elbow to make sure I didn't flick it too much. But this is where you get into the discussion we talked about. To me, that's probably just fine. There's a nice coating. Most of it came off as one cohesive thing. Uh, probably as a speech therapist or a dietitian, you'd want to put it in your mouth and see if you think it's too sticky. But when you put it on there and you only do a wrist flick, it comes off. So to me, that would be fine and it would pass. And that's something that's just naturally in your facility. And then you can include it. But you're going to want to test everything. Um, we've had some people talk to us about their condiments, uh, things like mustard. Uh, the barbecue sauce, the different things you use in your facility, just make sure the ones you have are thick enough that they're the liquid level you want them to be or whatever. Uh, and, you know, don't be as shy if you get something like a commercial pulled pork. Here, this one we bought, you take a look at it. What I can see right away is this one is probably not chopped up enough. So I would be able to run it through the food processor and depending on what happens to it in the food processor, I'll either have to add some more extremely thick stock to it to make it work. But, you know, this is something you get from your vendor. It's something that you just do a quick evaluation. Okay, do we need to do more? In this case, I would say you probably do. I can feel some big chunks in there. And one of the things that I should point out is, is this particular one shows is that having your barbecue sauce mixed in is just as good. So we talk about extremely thick stock being the key to doing everything, but that that's if you're flexible, you know, if that's what you want to use one thing for everything, but certainly when it comes to something like pulled pork, beef, something like that, you have people who want it different ways. You have people who are going to want the sauce on top. You can have people where they want it mixed in. You're going to have people uh, who want a lot of sauce, people who want a little bit of sauce and the flexibility that you can have. If you have a thickened barbecue sauce, if you have a thin barbecue sauce, you can thicken it with extremely thick, or you can put in straight simple thick. Things like that to help thicken it up so that you're not gonna have a problem. Um, but when you buy something that has sauce in it already and it's like this, you can throw it in the processor and you can process it down and make it acceptable. So the things you're already using, they're perfectly possible. You don't have to start from scratch. You don't have to start from somewhere. 
you can take things like that. Um, we're going to move on to liquids, or do you want me to process this now? You can go ahead. All right, let me grab the processor bowls. And we can process it just to show you. It really takes no time at all. Switch to the right camera so you can see it. So, you know, you open up. You know, sometimes you get this pulled pork and it, it's fine. And sometimes you just got to process it a little more. It's no big deal. Everything works great in a facility, you know, and that's where it's he's given us the test methods just to figure out is today's pork we're getting from our vendor, is it cold enough or we've got to process it ourselves. So I don't know if you guys probably can't see it with that camera angle. So I'm gonna switch the angle now that I turn the camera so you can see that um, what flows. See how it's kind of pulsing? So I know right away, I don't need to add more liquid to this. But you know, it's just a few seconds and it really processes things down for us. You know, I can see right away that the particle size got down there. Yes, there's strands in there, but that's allowed again because you're allowed four by four by 15. And uh, so right now it's at minced and moist and that would be fine. Right there, I'll put some back over here. And then you can see right here, we got the minced and moist. It's going through the tines of the fork. No problem. There's no liquid dripping. I don't expect it to stick to the spoon. Yeah, see, it comes off no problem. And if you want to go the rest of the way down to here, we just let it run. This is probably processing fine. I do have to scrape it a little bit. So even though we talk about the magic of extremely thick stock, and we talk about using that the most, it's a handy tool to have around. You don't always need that. It's taking a look at what you have in your facility and figuring out, giving the guidelines, what are we gonna do? So, you know, this is, honestly, this is a brand that I had never bought before, I'd never seen before. And so it's nice and easy to process and get down to that puree. All right. It's just a few times opening up that bowl, scraping down the sides, getting rid of big pieces. Then we have a nice puree pulled pork. Again, it's not going to stick. And we got it smooth with no pieces. So that's that's what you can do with stuff that you have in your facilities already. It's already there. But the key, of course, is that you got to do the testing. You got to figure out what you have and what you're starting with. So as you're moving to an itsy transition, you know, you know what you need to work on. Okay, so we're going to go back to Lori to talk about where she's going to test the ice cream again for us. And then this is for you to test next. All right, why don't we look at the ice cream again and see if it's changed at all. So I'm gonna do the fork drip and it's not dripping, so that's good. But let's look at the spoon tilt test again and see what happens. So I'm gonna, ah, look at that, a, a, a good spoon, so that worked. So it just needed to be um, softened a little bit more and it passes. So um, good, that's good news. And now I have something I can eat because it's really good. Okay, now we're gonna go to John if he's ready and he is going to, we're gonna, we're gonna transition to the liquids. Okay, so we are back to, I guess where it all began at Simply Thick, we began in the world of liquids. So we're gonna go back to liquids and we're just gonna show you a variety of liquids as we thicken them uh, and, and test them. So you can see how quick and easy all this stuff is to do. Um, I think we're going to just start out with some water, and because it's new this year, let's do it at slightly thick. We have some four gram packets now that you add to four ounces of liquids, and then you can make it slightly thick. So we we'll just take this, we tear open our packet, we add the liquid to it. 
have a spoon, Laurie, because I am out of spoons over here. Not the forks, not the spoons. And then we just take it and we mix, not overly vigorously, nice and kind of a normal pace. Uh, what you, it takes 20, 30 seconds, maybe a little bit more sometimes. Uh, and when you're mixing the water, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It thickens fairly quickly. You begin to see the air bubbles. You can feel it on the spoon, especially when you become pretty good at it. And uh, so one of the things Itzy introduced was the new level slightly thick. In the past, we had nectar and honey, and that translates to mildly thick and moderately thick for the most part. And Itzy added this new slightly thick. It came out of the pediatric world. It does not mean that it is a pediatric level. Uh, it was added into the diet specifically because of its use in pediatrics and its existing use. But what they wanted to do was um, they just they added it. And so it's part of the framework and it's not limited to pediatrics. And I've been places where they've told me that it is the number one thickness they are uh, putting people on. And I kind of expect it is going to get that way in places because it just minimizes the amount of thickness, but it gives you a new tool. The problem, of course, from a manufacturer standpoint is that you get something that is, um, there's no real market for it. So we took a little bit of a risk this year and we added it to our arsenal. And then, um, so there you can see, it's about 1.4. So that is the slightly thick level. You can hold it up, hold up the flow test card to it. And you can see that it matches up with the, the gray area. So that's how you thicken something with Simply Thick, slightly thick. Um, and you know, an important thing to remember about Itzy is that it's not like, oh, that's just barely slightly thick. That is slightly thick. And slightly thick is slightly thick. It can be anywhere between one and four. It is a range of thicknesses and you're not just limited to, it's not discriminative or it's not something the test methods, I guess, are not as well characterized where, you know, you can compare a 6.8 to a 6.7 and talk about how different they are. It's really about being slightly different um, thicknesses. So I'm going to cut over to Julie, or to, Ju to Lori. It's Lori with the juice. So it came out as Julie. Uh, actually, she's going to show us some power aid. So I'm going to turn it back over to Lori to thicken that. Okay. So I've got some Powerade here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure four ounces because I'm gonna use a mildly thick packet into four ounces. So I did wanna mention that, well, let's, let's mix it first and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the things with Itzy. So this is our um, mildly thick packet and I put it into four ounces. And then I'm going to stir it for about 30 seconds and then we'll test it. So John did slightly thick. Now we're going to do mildly thick. And you know that is equivalent to nectar thick for those of you that are learning the language. And as you're going through ITSY, so if you look at your little ITSY flow test card, um, one to four is slightly thick. Four to eight is mildly thick, like what we're doing now. And um, eight to 10 is moderately thick. Um, level four, um, extremely thick, you cannot put through a syringe. And just something to note is that you never wanna be right on the cusp, like at four or eight, because then it's not either. It's not any of the thicknesses. So then you'd need to modify um, your beverage or adding more liquid or adding more simply thick. So why don't we try to do our um, Itsy Flow tests with the Powerade. There we go. So we're gonna fill it to the 10 milliliter mark and then we'll test it for, we'll do 10 seconds. Okay, let me get my phone there. And let's see what happens. Mm, that seems like it's flown out quickly. 
Let's see what happens. Okay, so that one is on, this one actually came out to be slightly thick. So it's a little low. And you think I put in too much Powerade? So that can happen too. Okay, so John says I put in too much Powerade and that's why it came out to be slightly thick. Um, you know, we have to be, with Simply Thick to get it right, it needs to be four ounces of liquid with a packet. So um, we'll, we'll test some more liquid and we'll show you that work. So this is live TV. Okay, back to John. Well, it's, it's one of those things that it's, it's very easy to, to kind of have a laugh about, but that's the beauty of ITSI is we have these test methods. If you mix that up and you look at it and said, you know, it looks a little thin, let's run the test. Then you can see. Um, and then as she was doing the test and I looked over, I just happened to be at the angle where I could see that it was like, there was like five ounces instead of four, which happens when you're going really quick. So we're gonna talk about thickening carbonated beverages. It's things like Diet Dr. Pepper, Diet Coke, things like that. And it's the type of thing that people really like and it's something that's been a part of their life. And we wanted to figure out a way to do it. So it turned out when we asked our sales reps and other people around the company, we said, all right, what's your best tips for how to thicken sodas or how to, how to thicken uh, carbonated beverages? And we got back, I'm not kidding, about 30 different tips and techniques that people swore by from making things to carbonated. And so we actually developed a and did a design of experiments to eliminate all of the variables to figure out which ones actually worked. And we presented a poster at ASHA on this actually. And so the trick is to actually use two cups and we will just do, uh, I'll leave that because fine. And then what happened, the big thing we discovered in this is that something like a canned soda or a bottled soda has excess carbonation in it. So what we need to do is get rid of some of the carbonation and then still leave enough so that people can enjoy it while they're drinking. So I'm making sure I've got four ounces. We pour it into one cup and we have the thickener in the second cup already. And then we just mix for about five seconds. The idea here is to release some of that carbonation so that um, so you don't have as much in the liquid when you're thickening it. And when we did this design of experiment, this was our goal actually, was to minimize the size of the head. And so here we've artificially created that head. So you wait for the head to settle down. And now you pour it very carefully from one cup to the second cup. A lot of people said, nobody's gonna use two cups. We said, well, if they really wanna enjoy their sodas, they'll figure out how to do it. And people have been using this for a couple of years with great success. Um, I'm not gonna be able to flow test this one. Oh, and you have to mix extremely slowly here because as you saw when I mixed before, the mixing action releases a lot of carbonation. So you actually have to mix a little bit longer and a little bit slower. Figure eights help sometimes. And as you're mixing it, you'll feel it begin to thicken. And the beauty is that you don't get a big head. And when we first got these results, we were just, we were shocked that you could have so little head. And it's one of those things where the process is worth the payoff, right? So you get your thickened soda, get something that looks good and people can taste the carbonation and it works great. And now that I have it nice and thickened, you can see the bubbles are floating in there in the mildly thick. And then I know what you're gonna say, right? Like, what am I gonna do for ice cubes? Well, look, I have ice cubes right here. You take thickened water, mildly thick water, you freeze them, and then when you put them in here, you are gonna have something that will melt into mildly thick liquids. You're not diluting it and you're not thinning it out. Well, I can have an ice cube or two. My thickened soda, and it is definitely one of those scenarios where it is bon appetit, right? Sure. 
And if uh, you want a little rum with your Coke, uh, something thick works here too. Uh, we will do this one to moderately thick, just so we do something a little bit mildly thick. We'll put in one, two pump strokes. One of the things we've always talked about at Simply Thick is that you want to be able to enjoy all the things you've always have enjoyed. And so having something that they can alcoholic beverages, whether it's rum or it's um, wine or beer, things like that. Because the whole idea is to get people to drink more, right? So if they can drink the things they're used to drinking, then that's going to work really well for them. And you'll encourage fluid consumption. Uh, obviously, if you do it at the same thickness as your Diet Coke, you can have a Coke and rum, rum and Coke. I guess you want to do a regular Coke to have that. Uh, and, you know, this is making a nice thick rum. I've always thought there's a great market in the, uh, in the college world for this. But uh, we spent all of our time focused on uh, people in the world of dysphagia. You can see there's just a few drops coming out. And I'm seeing like a 9.4. 9.4-ish. And a flow test card showing you in the yellow. So see, it works really well, even with something that's got all that alcohol in it, as the rum does. Um, so that's a bridge of choice for people. Let's them enjoy everything they wanted to. And I guess for one last fun little thing, in your thumb. Oh yeah, we got So here's Marilax. You all know that uh, you can't thicken that, right? Uh, that's true with starch-based thickeners. Um, but when you have something like Simply Thick, it does thicken it. I like to show people this just so that they can see it with their own eyes. Because it's really cool that you can do this. So we have a little too much water. Let's get down to four ounces of water. USB wire. Turn the Miralax, dissolve in the Miralax. Add in the Simply Thick. And this will thicken. Uh, this is an important thing to know that it exists because um, the Institute for Safe Medicine Practices in Canada actually had a case where um, people's, um, they mixed in the Miralax with a starch-based thickened, pre-thickened beverage and uh, they aspirated and there were signs and symptoms of aspiration. They wrote a big report about it and got Lori throwing things at me now. And, you know, it, it's something good to know that you can do it. Pull it off. And then we can see that it's in the yellow range, right about nine, right where my finger is, of course. So you can see thickened Miralax. And let's do a couple minutes. And hopefully this will be the exciting end of the night that we we're hoping. And so this one, the vanilla was 5.8 when we tested it about an hour and a half ago.
And we have about 7.4. And you can see on there, it is still in the pink. Oh, maybe if my fingers get out of the way, you can see it's in the pink. So it has stayed mildly thick. It's been refrigerated for an hour and a half. And now we have the chocolate. And this was in the sevens when we began. And I just heard a beep. And it is now in the nines. So as expected, we have two of the same flavors from the same brand thickened identically, that if you were gonna consume it right away, they were both mildly thick. But if you wanted to store one and serve it later, the chocolate becomes moderately thick instead of mildly thick. And that is why it's so important that you do your own testing on the supplements you're using in your facility. As I said, we are trying to work out into the database where we have, um, we try and make it so that people can get the recipes very easily and that they can use those. Um, we're doing a lot of testing. We have a lot of people working on it, trying to decide, okay. And part of the condition is gonna be, when are you gonna consume it? How are you gonna store it? Because all of those matter. The density of these solutions and the complexity of the chemistry mean that you're gonna see these slight variations. So I think that's everything we're gonna demonstrate, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And it's time for questions and answer again. All right, folks, we are going to go ahead and dive into our webinar question and answer section. So first off, I'm going to turn it over to Lori at this time. Lori, first question for you is, can you tell us once more, why were you using the small Cuisinart for your peaches? Ah, so you don't have to use a small Cuisinart, but I was using it because I just did one cup of peaches. So two half cup servings and I probably would need to put a little bit more in the larger Cuisinart, probably would need to do at least two cups. And so that's why I use the small one. So you can really use either one. It was for convenience. Thank you. And related to the peaches, why add Simply Thick directly to the peaches? Okay, that's, that's a good question. So the peaches and a lot of many fruits have a high water content. So we wouldn't want to add our extremely thick stock to that because then we'd be introducing more liquid with the Simply Thick. So what we wanted, why I added straight Simply Thick to that is because I didn't want to introduce any other liquid. So the, thick, the Simply Thick worked on binding it and thickening it and making it to a pureed consistency. And next question, John, I'm going to turn this to you. What is the recipe for the thickened stock? The recipe for thickened stock is um, basically one six gram portion of Simply Thick per ounce of stock. So what that works out to is that if you have a, we, we usually think in terms of a four ounce serving here at Simply Thick. So that's four pump strokes with our bottle or it's two of our honey thick packets um, to get to 24 grams where it's four of our mildly thick packets, or it would be six of our slightly thick. There's a lot of math involved in Simply Thick sometimes, but the idea is to get 24 grams into a four ounce serving. And John, I'm going to stick with you for this next question. So we'll keep the camera on you. The next question is about the bread. Does the bread recipe work for different types of bread? Uh, we have worked with, well, primarily what we've done is work with what I'll call standard whole wheat. Uh, and the reason is because that seems to be what most facilities across the country are using. And that's the standard that we're seeing in uh, nursing homes and hospitals. Uh, I don't think it would work as good with white bread. Uh, and when you get into some of the heartier, mealier ones, now you're talking about a mixed texture anyway. So it's not gonna work as well. Um, you can modify it slightly to your needs, but primarily we've worked with that whole grain bread or whole wheat bread about 80, I think it's about 80 calories per slice, right? So this one just happens to be nature's own and it's 70 calories per slice. That's kind of the area that we had worked in. 
All right, and next question. This is actually directed toward both of you. So Lori, we'll switch back to you first. And then John, if you'd like to add, you certainly can. In your discussions of um, ITSI work groups, has there been discussion about liquidized foods counting towards a fluid restriction goal? So I'll say that one more time. In your discussions with ITSI work groups, has there been discussion about liquidized foods counting towards a fluid restriction goal? Actually, John's part of the ITSI groups, so he would be able to answer it from an ITSI group standpoint, but liquidized, let's think about that. So that's like moderately thick. It's equal to moderately thick. So there is going to be fluid that would count. And um, has that been discussed in your, um, your ITSI group, John? I, I have not been privy to any discussions about how it's counted. Uh, most of the stuff I've seen is not focused on li liquidized at all, to be honest with you. So I don't even know how to answer the question or how well, the calculation would be made. Yeah, so it, it certainly would count as a fluid. Yeah. All right, and if there is more of a follow-up to that question, feel free to add it in the Q&A button. And our final question for now is about John's shirt. John, we love your shirt. Can you tell us where you got that so that we can rep Itsy? Uh, so my shirt is a, is a custom shirt. Uh, I knew I was going to be giving a lot of these presentations, and I thought, I want to have something that I can wear to just you know, tell everybody how much I love Itsy. And so we put together a design, and it's, it's on a website, P-A-O-M, print all over me. That's what it actually stands for, payom.com. And they're a company that makes one-off on-demand shirts. And the design is open to anybody. So if you go to paom.com and you can order, you just type in ITSI, I-D-D-S-I, and then the design will come up and then you can order it. And it takes about six weeks to get it. So you gotta have patience, but it is the coolest thing that you'll ever own in a very small set. <laughs> And we did get one more question regarding the equipment used. This is a big question, so maybe we can answer it uh, more simply, but can you tell us again, what Cuisinarts were you using? Are those the best ones that work and would you recommend any other equipment? John, we'll go to you first. So this is a Cuisinart 14 cup food, food processor. Uh, that is when we started all of our work, and all of our work is actually leading to a cookbook that we're going to put out probably end of this year, beginning of next year, uh, geared towards consumers. And the first thing we had to figure out is we had to get everybody using the same equipment so that they could standardize the recipes. This is a good size, the 14 cup Cuisinart, it's a good size for making four portions. If you're making more than that, you might want to use a bigger one. If you're making less than that, you could use a smaller one. That small Cuisinart that Lori used is, it's a little underpowered, I think, for processing meats. Um, to get a good processing with the meat, you need like that 14 cup size. And part of the key is those nice sharp S blades. Do we have another one? Yeah, I can just grab this dirty one. But it's, it's these S blades that really seem to make the difference. Uh, there's nothing particularly spectacular about Cuisinart. That's just what we standardized and used in all of our recipe development. Um, you know, commercially, the RoboCoos are just as good. There's a RoboCoo over there that we just didn't use. And um, we do know that a lot of people have had some success with some various Ninja products as well. So the key is to having really sharp blades and to get that high speed so that you can get that turnover in the bowl. All right, and I'm going to turn it to Lori for her final comment. So I just wanted to mention something on the Cuisinart. So those are really easy to buy also. So they're available everywhere, this um, 14 cup Cuisinart from Bed Bath & Beyond to Amazon to Home Depot. So it's very easy to get. All right, and that concludes our Q&A for today. If you do have any further questions, we recommend you email us at itsy at simplythick.com. And at this time, Lori and John, I'll go ahead and have you turn your cameras off and we'll do some housekeeping. But before we do housekeeping, we do always like to throw in one last fun, fun little bit, and that's our raffle prize. So drum roll, please. Our raffle winner is Brian Bocci. Brian, congratulations. We will be in touch with you regarding your prize. 
and a little bit of housekeeping before we let you go. Thank you all so much for attending the ITSE webinar. As a reminder, you will be emailed a link to the recorded webinar for future viewing. So you can watch this at home. You can do it, the demos yourself at your convenience. And we will be sure to include that ice cream video as well. As a reminder, speech language pathologists and certified dietary managers will need to complete a quiz online in order to receive your CEUs. Quiz details and instructions were emailed to you. Registered dietitians and diet techs will receive certificates of completion for your files within one week. If you are participating as a group or only one of you registered, you can contact us if you need additional certificates for those who participate it. Please email us at itsy at simplythick.com. For more information about upcoming webinars, visit simplythick.com and check out our events board. Thank you for attending and have a wonderful rest of your week. Hey Liz, one, one last thing is I just wanna say a big thank you to Health Technologies for letting us use their kitchen and their facility tonight. Uh, it was great. Um, we really could not have done it without so much space. So it was very wonderful. And we really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Health Technologies. That was a good point. And thank you again all for attending our first live ITSY demo webinar. Have a great week, folks.